Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So in the previous episodes, we have been building this computer from scratch. And so far, we've gotten to the point where we've got a Fibonacci sequence here. And also, in the previous episode, we built this display down here that looks pretty neat. I'm not 100% sold on the color because I feel like there's already a lot of blue here, but uh, and we can always change it. So in this episode, I'd like to continue on this trend and see if we can get the rest of these displays built. Specifically, I'd like to focus on a display for the registers right now. So I guess first things first, uh, we can actually copy a fair bit of this into a new circuit. So let's copy this switch. Here we go. Uh, I don't think we need this. So we have four different registers plus the program counter. So So, um, depending on the value of S, it will either display nothing if it's zero, it'll display R and then the register number if it is one, and if it is two, then it displays PC. Otherwise, if it's three, it displays nothing again. So, I think that'll work pretty good. I do need to wire this up. And seven bits are needed, but okay, I think that'll do. So, reg display. All right, I didn't set these settings. Um, uh, probably six. Hmm. I think that's fine. All right. Okay, so we have S and R, and those be different depending on where. Okay, um, move this down here, and then we have this here. I'm second guessing doing this. I think I'd rather split this out. Okay, so I changed my mind. I want an enable signal, and if enable is false, then it just blanks out the dis display. And then I want a jump signal that switches it to, um, oh, this is backwards. Okay, let me just fix that. There we go. So I want a jump signal that when it's zero, then it displays the register. Otherwise it displays PC. I think that should work. 
Yeah. Okay. So now everything's all kind of jumbled together, but we have an enable signal, a jump, and a register. So um, I think for this particular one, it is always enabled. Mm, that's not what I want. Okay. That looks good. Nice. Okay. We have no signal that RS is valid or not. Hmm. I guess we could add it. Um, this is the RS valid signal here. Um, this is also known as two reg, so we could just call it two reg. Uh, it's at the bottom there. I want it above move. Okay. So these two displays are always going to be the same. I'm not sure how much value there is in having them separate. So I'm just going to delete the extra copy here. Ooh, now it would be nice to have uh, a display of what's going into each register. One thing I was curious about was if we have a seven segment display like this, um, this one takes a hex number, but if we give it, what I don't want to know is this button. Uh, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so we can turn off a hex display by uh, using a buffer. Um, this is called a buffer or a line driver or uh, it's got various different names. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm just disconnecting. So this becomes Z which is um, short for high impedance or disconnected essentially. Um, so if I disconnect the digit then I can make it display nothing. So that would be the way that we would disable this. So Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I have ideas. Okay. And then Okay, there's our enable signal. So the issue is the splitter is backwards, but it should have a way to mirror, and I also want it nice and spread out. There we go. And does it spread out any further than that? Yes, good. Excellent. Um, I think that might be enough for him. Nope. Indeed. So this will display hex. Mm. 
There. Okay. And we can turn it on or not. Excellent. Um, what would be really nice is just to turn off digits that are zero that are in the leading position. Um, I'm not sure if there's an easy way to do that. Uh, hmm. I have to use a comparator and a priority encoder, I think. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's worth it. It'd be a lot of extra effort, maybe later. There we go. Uh, I don't really want the digits to be the same color. Let's set these to um, Okay, we have a display. Um, what to display now? I guess we could display L and R. I'm not sure if two reg is the correct one. Uh, do we want this always? Hmm. Hmm. Just ne enable it for now. Let's see what this does. I don't find that green terribly readable. Not enough contrast. Um, I guess we could use red. Uh, yeah, that's better. Better than the default red too. Okay, so now you see why I would prefer to have the zeros removed. They just add too much noise. Um, but, well, uh, so L is not valid when there's a jump. Are there any other cases? Kind of be nice if this was a decimal display, but um, in 32 bits you can fit 4 billion something and that's a lot of digits that's uh too many digits 10 digits i guess i guess it's only two more digits than this well that doesn't make sense it's got to be more digits than that no uh, maybe not mm -hmm. well an exercise for another day <laughs> it is possible to make it a decimal display in this program but it involves uh, quite a bit more electronics um one thing that I I would kind of like to do is encode the operation um, in a slightly better way, but uh, right now what we can do is do this. Like that. And we're not displaying the result either, which we could. We do have the result right here. Um, so L is always blank in this case, so I kind of like to fix that. Um, so now on a jump, that display is blanked out. So it just says we're moving this value into PC. I wonder if it makes sense to do that on move as well. Um, because on move, it is just displaying the old value of R3. It's not super helpful. Um, eh, it's okay as it is right now, I think. And I'm just going to just tidy this up one sec here. All right, there we go. We have fancy blinking lights. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.